Well, good morning. Sounds like the microphone's working. That's a good thing. Nice to see you. Welcome to worship. I don't have any announcements to make. Does anybody else have anything that needs to be shared? The turkey dinner is coming up. And uh, I guess that's, is that November 6th or November 6th, the Saturday? And it's all pre-order and it's all takeout. And there's a limited number of meals. So if you want to make sure you get yours, I guess leave your message on the church answering machine sooner than later. I think it's $20 a meal. And um, you don't, there aren't a lot of choices this time, right? Yeah, every meal is the same. We're all equal. Yeah, you, you pay your money, you get your meal. Yeah, to keep it simple for everybody. And I, how did the pie thing go? If there aren't any other announcements, let's prepare for worship. Our opening prayer. God is creating the heaven and the earth. God gives us darkness and light, night and day. God creates plants and animals, birds and humans, water, land and sky. God makes it all. Thanks be to God for all that God is doing. Jesus came into the world to shine a light of love. God's love is our light and shows the way to new life. We can reflect that light. We can brighten the way for others. I'm going to keep my distance, of course, but I'm going to come out here a little bit because sometimes when, if the prayer bowl is big enough and the room is quiet enough, when you ring the prayer bowl, you don't just hear it, you can actually feel it. And it can kind of be a signal to your whole body to quiet down and take a moment to listen, to be aware of God's presence with us. I haven't tried this here, but they're also called singing bowls, right? So you can, you can make the bowl sing. Can you feel that? So we're going to do our version of passing the peace. You can stand if you're able to, if you want to. And uh, what we've been doing is, yeah, stand up. And, and, and you, can, you, can, you, can turn, you can turn around and look at people and make eye contact and then offer them peace. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. I'm happy to see everyone. We have a special video this morning called Gratefulness. With it, 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 and it's narrated by... A, a Benedictine monk named David Steindl Rast. Um, uh, it's a beautiful, poetic, prayerful meditation on what it means to be grateful. You think this is just another day in your life? 
It's not just another day. It's the one day that is given to you. Today. It's a gift. It's the only gift that you have right now. And the only appropriate response is gratefulness. If you learn to respond as if it were the first day in your life and the very last day, then you will have spent this day very well. Begin by opening your eyes and be surprised that you have eyes you can open. That incredible array of colors that is constantly offered to us for pure enjoyment. Look at the sky. We so rarely look at the sky. We so rarely note how different it is from moment to moment with clouds coming and going. Open your eyes, look at that. Look at the faces of people whom you meet. Each one has an incredible story behind their face. Not only their own story, but the story of their ancestors. All that life from generations and from so many places all over the world flows together and meets you here like a life-giving water if you only open your heart and drink. Open your heart to the incredible gifts that civilization gives to us. You flip a switch and there is electric light. Turn a faucet and there is warm water and cold water. And drinkable water. A gift that millions and millions in the world uh, will never experience. And so I wish you that you will open your heart to all these blessings and let them flow through you. That everyone whom you will meet on this day will be blessed by you. Just by your presence. Let the gratefulness overflow into blessing all around you. And then it will really be a good day. Gratefulness.org. Good place to look, and there's 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 a function on their website. You can you can uh, ask for a daily email with a gratefulness meditation. Um, I, I I get words from them every day, and they're ver they're very helpful. Remind me to be grateful for life. 
for what we have. Part of how we show our gratitude for life is, is we make an offering. We're not doing it the way we're used to. So there's an offering plate when you walked in the sanctuary. There's an offering plate when you walk out. We'll get you coming or going. Um, and I know lots of folks make their regular contributions through automa automatic withdrawal from the bank account. Um, lots of ways to do that. We're still collecting food for the food bank. There's a hamper at the back. Lots of ways we help. We help with making pies. We help with providing music. We help with making sure the sound works and that the, vi the cameras are on. There's a lot of things that we're doing to, um, out of the life we've been given to share and contribute to other people. Here's our dedication prayer. Sharing from what we have, we give thanks. We are blessed in so many ways and have so many reasons to be grateful. The gifts we make of our time, our effort, our creativity, our prayers, our commitment, our money, can all contribute to the larger work of creation that God is doing every moment of each day. We make these gifts and ask God to bless them. We pray they will be put to good use. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah in the 11th chapter. The basic job description of a holy prophet in ancient Israel was to share with the people 
their vision of God's hope and dreams for them, their country, and the whole of creation. In Middle Eastern culture, the handiest metaphor for how God would like things to be was the rule of the faithful monarch. These hopes have never been fulfilled by an earthly ruler, but the justice, righteousness, faithfulness, and peace described in these poetic expressions still set a standard for how things ought to be. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat the calf and the lions and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed the bear with the bear. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Our second reading is from Matthew's Gospel in the sixth chapter. Over these last weeks, we have listened to these verses a number of times. Is there a word or a passage that touches you today? Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 14, and it's from the New International Version. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the streets to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask him. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. So if Lorraine and Larry play together, you clap. But if Larry plays by himself. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Just, just checking. 
I know he would, he would play anyways, whether you clapped or not, but I think you would. Yeah. <laughs> I, I read a reflection this week by a woman named Ginny, who lives, as she says, in Tasmania, the magic isle in the south of Australia. She says it's filled with unique birds and animals, ancient forests, awe-inspiring wilderness, and truly amazing life forms in the surrounding ocean. She says, I also live very close to a forest reserve, and my dog takes me for a walk there every day. One day, it dawned on me that this creation, all of it, was the inevitable, the fantastic and visible life of God. God's beauty, love, and life had to burst out, not just throughout the universe, but also on this little blue planet. Nothing could stop God, who is love and beauty flowing through the universe. I read her words because I thought they were very much in the same spirit as the video we watched from Brother David, A Grateful Day. We can look at or imagine these images of places of beauty all over the world, and maybe our first thought is, oh, I wish I could still travel. I wish I could go to those places and take videos myself. But we could also take a cue from Brother David and from Ginny and let their joy, their sense of wonder, their gratefulness rub off on us and remind each of us to look with open eyes and an open heart at where we actually live and what's around us right here and be grateful and thankful for what we have. At our Sunday morning services, we're making our way through the lines of the Lord's Prayer. We've come to your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In an earlier week, I mentioned that whatever and wherever else heaven may be, we get a glimpse of heaven every time we see love and beauty in the world. A couple of weeks ago, we worked with the parable from Jesus in which he pointed people towards heaven with a little story about a woman who mixes yeast into 60 pounds of flour and works hard to knead the dough. A tiny bit of yeast was enough for all that flour, all that bread, but it wouldn't have bread if it wasn't for the hard work of that woman. With love and effort, she brought the heavenly smell and beautiful taste of bread into the world. A lot of bread. 60 pounds of flour. That make a lot of bread. For how many was she baking? Why was she doing it all by herself? All over the world, families depend upon the unrelenting love and generosity of women like the baker in that story who make sure people get fed. If we look at the world around us with awe, and gratitude, we can see the love, the creativity, the generosity of God. God's at work making everything. So much beauty, so much life, so much possibility in this world, and God is the creative source, the maker, or maybe the baker of it all. It, it's possible that when Jesus told that parable, he was suggesting God looks like a woman who bakes bread, who works hard to make something beautiful possible. We're in the middle of our Thanksgiving weekend. Ever notice it's not just thanks weekend? That's thanks is the gratitude part of it, but it's not complete without what? The giving part, yeah. Those two words belong together. The giving part, the generosity part, that's a sign of healthy, maturing spirituality. Archbishop Desmond Tutu, remember him? Know who he is? Know his, his story? 
he told the story that maybe will get a, give us an insight, help us understand why true faith requires both humble gratefulness, gratitude, the thanking part, and faith-filled generosity, the giving part. Tutu said that when missionaries came to Africa, the whites had the Bible and the blacks had the land. Tutu went on to say, the missionaries told the blacks to shut their eyes and they would teach them to pray. When they opened their eyes, the whites had the land and the blacks had the Bible. My wife and I have very good friends who came to Canada from South Africa. They came over to practice medicine here on, in Canada. And they've shown us photos and videos of where they come from. And it's what a beautiful land. Our friends are descended from both English and Dutch settlers, colonizers, who when they arrived in Africa saw it not as a gift to be shared, but as a land to be conquered, a land that was filled with people who would make a useful labor force. Most everywhere the European Empire builders went, they used our religion. They used Christianity as a way to find fault, to look down on the local population. It made it easier to call the local people heathens or savages and promote the myth that they weren't as worthy as white. It, claim, it made it easier to claim their land as the property of some distant Christian king. After that, the missionaries would come to tell the newly subjugated people It's a tough story, true story that's happened all over the world. Wherever our people go, that's the story. Too often the faith of the powerful, the comfortable, has been strong on, thank you God for all the blessings. But we have often failed to remember that God's blessings aren't just for certain people. When this happens, when people decide that some folks are more blessed, more worthy than others, it gives them a rationale for all sorts of injustice, all sorts of cruelty, all sorts of them and us. And we're better than them. And we get more than them. So there needs to be a connection between our gratitude for all the ways we're blessed, because we are, and our duty to share and be a blessing to others. But, you know, thinking beyond our own little circles, beyond our family, our friends, our town, or people like us, that's countercultural. That's radical in our world. Society and our capitalist economy teaches all of us to be entitled, not grateful. Proud of what we've earned. We earned. Ever watch The Simpsons? The writers nailed it once when they had Bart Simpson say grace. Do you remember this? Can you imagine this? Bart Simpson at the table. He, say, he, he bows his head, makes his hands into typical praying po posture, and he says, Dear God, we paid for all this stuff ourselves, so thanks for nothing. He, the writers nailed it, that attitude, that first world privilege. We earn money to pay for what's on our dinner table. That's true. But there's a deeper truth that everything we have comes to us as a gift from God. Every breath the fact that we woke up this morning. I love the way Brother David says it. The fact that you open your eyes and you have eyes to see, that's a gift. Every ability, every opportunity, every moment of life itself 
is a gift. The fact that we're able to earn our keep and provide for our families, our loved ones, that's a blessing. Our Christian faith, when it's at its best, when it's at its most mature, most Jesus-like, teaches that the world and all the wealth, all the beauty, all the opportunity, all the goodness that God continues to provide, that we're meant to treat all of this not simply as a possession, but as a sacred trust. Our faith at its best teaches that we don't really own anything. Not even our own lives. We're given our lives by God to take care of, to do something worthwhile with, to care for others. We're meant to use all the gifts that God gives so that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We say that over and over again, right? Every time we say the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What if, what if we grow into really meaning it? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And those words are not just about what happens later after we die. They're about the here and now. We who are so very blessed, we are meant to be a blessing to other people. So remember that story, the Desmond Tutu story about the white folks standing up with the land and the black folks standing over there with the Bibles? They haven't got to the punchline yet. Saving that for the end. With a mischievous smile, Desmond Tutu ended his story by saying, actually, it was us blacks that got the better deal. He can only say that because of his faith in God and in his understanding that life itself is the blessing, that it's a gift of love that flows constantly from God. His capacity to forgive the white folks who colonized his land and the life that he looks upon as a blessing, he only knows to look at life that way because of the Bible, because of the faith he was raised in, because of that great love that flows from God. Opening ourselves to God allows God's life and love to flow through us into the world. We're blessed, and we're meant to bless others. We're meant to be like that woman, the baker, hard to mix the yeast into the flour, knead the dough so that all can rise. Amen. So one of our themes this morning has been gratefulness or gratitude. I want you to, if you feel comfortable, close your eyes for a moment. Take a moment to think of two or three things that you have received as blessing, as gifts. Think about those things. While you're thinking about those things, take a big inhale breath. And then let the, let, let the breath out, a big exhale. And maybe you notice as you think about those things and just breathe, that a sense of gratitude does arise within you. The thank you is born again inside you. When you find yourself being dragged down by the world, feeling overwhelmed by all the things that are going wrong, take a moment and breathe and remember things for which you can be grateful. Amen. I can't remember if I've read this prayer poem here before or not. And maybe some of you know the poet E.E. E. Cummings. New England poet.
His dad was a professor at Harvard, gave it up to become a congregational minister. So E. E. Cummings was a preacher's kid, so I have, some, I have a soft spot in my heart for him. This is maybe one of his most famous poems. And we can hear it as a prayer. It's called, I thank you, God, for most this amazing. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and a blue true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I, who have died, am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birthday of life of love and of wings and of the gay great happening the earth how should tasting touching hearing seeing breathing any lifted from the no of all nothing human merely being doubt unimaginable you now the ears of my ears awake and now the eyes of my eyes open. Look that one up on line two. That's E.E. E. Cummings. He's easy to find. Let's open our hearts for prayer. God of life, God of the soil, the water, the sun, God of the growth of new plants, God of the harvest, God, the provider of all we really need to live. When we feel happy to be alive, you are there. When we feel weary and sad, you are there. When the day is full of light and promise, you are there. When the night closes in with gloom and despair, you are there. In all things, in all places, in every moment, you are with us. You know all about our lives, and you know the things for which we might give thanks. You also know the things from which we might pray for relief. You know us from the inside out. Because you already know it all, God, our prayer time with you is not so much about passing on requests or compliments, but about being connected to you, the beginning and end of all things. In this connection, we may find our joy, our peace, our solace in hard times, and our companionship in times of celebration. We pray for ourselves and for others who need your help, not only because we want to draw these concerns to your attention, but because we need to release our own hearts from compulsion and worry. We need to hand it all over to you. In this holiday time, we pray for those who are away from home, those who are unable to be with their loved ones. We think of those in prison, those in the military, and those whose work takes them far afield. We pray for those whose family lives are difficult. We pray for peace and reconciliation and kindness in those situations. We pray for new possibilities of love and beyond the hardship and broken relationships that some experience. We remember in prayer those with loss, the death of loss and whether it happened this week or decades ago can cast a shadow on holidays it's to be sensitive to those whose hearts may be heavy with grief we pray for those who are ill at home or in hospital for those who are lonely especially those in nursing homes and seniors residences Pray also for caregivers who continue their duties through these holiday times and bring compassion and love to work with them. God, we give you thanks for the stories of our faith and the community in which they come to life. We pray for this church and the other faith communities that help people to find meaning and purpose and joy in their lives. We pray especially with gratitude for the generous hearts of all those who give their time and the resources to keep this an active, life-filled, life-giving church. We pray for those in the neighborhood, the town, the world around us, who may have an emptiness inside them, 
May their search for meaning and purpose lead them to a place where they experience the love and acceptance of God. All of these prayers and the unspoken prayers of our hearts we offer to God. Now we pray together the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus responded to God's call to live a life of witness and service. We're invited to follow his path. We're called to offer love and hope, caring and light. We know there are many who need God's love. May you be blessed and strengthened by Almighty God to move gently upon the earth, to stop when you've done enough, and to rest when you're weary, and to rejoice in all creation. Happy Thanksgiving.